All right, so let's go into our Wuji stance. We always wanna start there. We wanna get ourselves set for the practice. So you wanna put your feet flat on the ground, all parts of the feet touching the ground. Bend the knees just slightly or relax the knees. Bring your hips slightly forward so that you have a nice flat back. Let your shoulders drop down, relax. The arms come slightly in front of you. Feel like the top of the head is being lifted upward, elongating the spine. Tuck the chin in just a little bit again. Keep a nice straight neck. Everything's in nice aligned. Breathe in and out through the nose. And as you breathe in, let the abdomen expand. Breathe all the way down to your abdomen, to your lower dantian. You breathe in, the abdomen expands, drawing the breath all the way down. And notice the sensation of the breath entering the nose, traveling through the body, warming in the lower Dantian. Have a slight pause. And then you begin your exhalation by pushing, allowing the abdomen to move towards the spine pushing the air all the way up and out. You feel the air leaving your nostrils and notice the difference in the quality and the temperature. We take a nice little pause again, and then we begin with the inhalation. And just focus on the breath, allow the body to relax, but it's, let yourself sink into the ground. Feel your feet connecting to the earth, sending your roots deep into the earth. And just let yourself relax into it. Let's bring our hands around to our kidneys. Just do a little kidney breathing. So as you breathe in, try to feel this area expand. And then as you breathe out, that area contracts. Allow the energy to flow out of your palms into your kidneys. Feel the warmth penetrating the skin. You can picture dark blue light leaving the palms, filling the kidneys. In the first posture of the Eight Brocade, long title is Two Hands Hold Up the Heavens. So let's bring our hands down. Like I said, we're gonna do a couple of variations. Let's do just a very nice, simple variation first. Palms are facing up. Try to visualize, feel the energy as you breathe in, you're drawing it up 
from the ground up through the soles of your feet, up the legs, up the torso as your hands rise up, fingers facing each other, hands roll in front of your face. Look up as your hands get up above you, look between the fingertips and then breathe out and sweep down. So we breathe in. Breathe out. And just do it nice and slow, drawing the energy up, sending it out to the universe. Then we have a pause. Then we gather energy from the universe and our energy around us that we no longer need and we send it back down to the earth to be recycled. Bring up fresh energy into the body, all the way out into the universe. Recycle that which no longer serves us. Good. Now let's intertwine our fingers as we come up. So we're gonna intertwine our fingers, roll over, still looking in between your fingers and let it come down. One more time, and then what we're gonna do, you can either intertwine your fingers or not. You're gonna breathe in. You're gonna bring your hands up just like we were doing, except now bring them slightly behind you. Look up, so you have to really lean back a little bit with your head to see through it. Hold your breath, look forward, then exhale down. So we breathe in. Hold a breath, breathe out. Now, as you do that, let's move the legs a little bit. So as you sweep down, just bend the knees just a little bit so that you drop down. And then as you come up, you straighten the knees a little bit, not locking them out. I'm gonna work the area known as the qua or the leg gates right in here. That helps bring the energy up, open the pathway for the energy to come up. One more time. And sweep down. Now, yesterday we cleared to the lungs between each of our postures. Today, let's do a slightly different between each posture. It's still a clearing, um, very much like bringing down the heavens, except we're not gonna go high, as high. We lift the energy up just to basically the front of the face, push it down once. Good. So this second posture is drawing the bow to shoot the arrow to kill the golden eagle. That's the long term. We just call it drawing the bow. The hardest part for most people with drawing the bow is getting into the correct horse riding stance. So I'm gonna, want to go to a nice wide stance. You want to make sure to turn your feet out 
probably about a 40, between 30 to 45 degrees. The way you know that your feet are at the proper angle is as you start to bend your knees, your knees follow your feet. So you notice my knees going this way, my foot is this way. That means I've got to take my foot and turn it further out so that I'm making sure my knees track in the same direction as my feet. You can put your hands on your thighs. That certainly makes it easier, gives you a little extra support and just go as wide as comfortable. I find that it's actually easier to go wide, very wide. Then the key, another key here, make sure that you don't injure yourself is with your knee. I'm gonna turn just this way. Is you wanna make sure the knee doesn't do that. The knee should never go beyond the toes and quite honestly, you should be able to see your toes at all times. If you're going out like this, you can't see your toes. You know, you're, you're leaning forward too much. You're not pu putting enough weight behind you. You wanna think there's like a little stool back here and I'm kind of putting a little more weight into my heels and I'm just going straight down. So I've got a nice flat straight back and I'm just going, I can go up and down like this. As I talked about yesterday, for those of you that have ever ridden English saddle, you post, well, you post in Western saddle too. though so it's not quite as obvious. And this is exactly like that. You're sitting in the saddle and you're posting. So you're going straight up and down. You're not leaning forward. You're not pushing the knees forward. The knees just bend. Go only as deep as you're comfortable. You don't need to go down to a 90. You don't need to go very far. Go to as far as comfortable and just get down into that position for a moment and just make sure you could kind of set that way. Good. Okay, so couple, again, bunch of different variations on drawing the bow. Um, Let's do one that I, I, I just that's just kind of nice and simple. We're going to start with our palms facing us, forearms together, and we're going to stand rather high. We're going to drop down. You're going to pull the left arm to the shoulder. So the elbow goes straight out beyond you. It doesn't go back here doesn't go up here, it just pulls straight back. I can't go any further with the elbow if I'm doing that. Notice, okay, and I'm, so I'm not pulling out here, I'm just pulling to the shoulder. With your right hand, your right hand goes out, your, your pointer finger is sticking up, your thumb is sticking out, the other fingers are curled, and this is the site on which you're pulling the bow and sighting to shoot the arrow. So you pull and then come back up to the forearms together. Then we switch. Breathe out as you pull the bow. Breathe in as you come back. The first posture we did was for the, more for the triple warmer meridian. This is for the spleen and kidney meridians for the most part, though the liver meridian certainly does get involved as well. The idea of going through all eight of these postures is it deals with all the meridians and the various muscle groups. One more time. Good. Just put your hands down for a second, bring it in, relax for a moment, and then let's do another alternative, another variation. So we're not gonna go into the horse riding stances deep on this, we're gonna stay Fairly standing. You still want a wide, stable stance. 
take your left hand and put it by the chest palm facing to the right. Bring your right hand out and you have your sight and then you're gonna pull with your left hand. Then your right hand sweeps around in front of you. And then as it comes to the chest, it pulls the bow while the left hand goes out. It's a very nice circular flow to it. Make sure you feel that opening the chest. One more time. Good, let's try one more variation. Just so you have something else to try in this one. Put both hands to your left. With your right hand, pull the bow, left hand is your sight. Then push both hands out and bring them around and do the opposite. One more time. Bring it in, down, bring the feet closer together. Let's clear. So breathing in, and breathe out. Good. The next one is separating heaven and earth. The simplest way to do to that Bring your hands up to the chest. You're gonna push down with your left hand, palm down while the right hand palm rotates and pushes up. And then you're simply gonna switch. Now breathing is kind of important on this one. You're gonna breathe out as the hands approach each other, breathe in as they separate, and you wanna make sure you get the pauses between the breaths. Because here we're separating the hands, we're connecting to heaven and earth, we're sending energy down to the earth, down to the heavens. Then in the pause, we're switching. And now we're gathering energy from the heaven and the earth bringing it into the body and then taking what we no longer need with the pause, switching again and sending it out to heaven and earth. So the meridian that work with separating heaven and earth are the stomach and spleen for the most part. Other meridians in all of these get involved, um, but those are the primary meridians. And again, on this one, as you drop the hands together, you can bend your knees and then straighten up a bit as long as you don't lock the knees out. Nice, slow breath. One more time. 
bring the hands back in front of the chest. Let's do a different variation. So again, the left hand comes up, right hand goes down. Now, instead of bringing them back down the center line, we bring them around. Compress into a chi ball and then separate. Come around, compress into a chi ball. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. And one more variation we're gonna do. Let's make sure everybody goes up with the left, down with the right. Look over your right shoulder as you press apart. And sort of like what we were doing in the first variation, hands cross, and then you're gonna now, as they go apart, you're looking over the opposite shoulder. Couple more. Good, let the hands come around. Do a clearing, breathe out. Good. Next posture is wise owl gazes backward. The simplest one is just put your hands down in front of you and just look over one shoulder, then the opposite shoulder. That's the most basic of this form, at least that I've seen. And come back to the middle, so you're facing forward. In my mind, that's too simple. Generally, the one I do is turn your palms so they're facing slightly back. So the thumbs are actually facing towards the ground. As you look over the shoulder, the thumbs rotate up and back. The whole arm twists, so it's not out of the wrists. It's all out of the arm. And then as they rotate back to the original position, your head comes forward. And then you go to the opposite. Now the lung meridian flows down to the thumbs. So this is really good for the lung meridian. It's also good for the heart meridian. Couple more.
and back to center and relax for a moment. There's another variation that I wanna show you that I find really interesting. Um, I haven't seen it a lot, but I kind of like it because it kind of gives you more of the grace of, of the bird, um, of the wings. So start with your hands down below, just as we did. I'm gonna turn a little more than sideways. As your left hand comes up, your right hand comes to the Ming Men point. So the left hand continues up and you twist your entire body, bend the elbow, look down and back. Then you come forward, opening that wing and opening the opposite wing. It's very much like with the digestion twist we've done in the past. Now, the thing that I've noticed with this one, it's really nice if you just get into a flow. But my understanding is the way that this is really practiced, and you ought to make sure that you're not pushing your chest out, you're standing nice and straight and tall the entire time, is as you come around, come into this position, now hold this position and just breathe and hold and relax. Let your body relax into it. See if you can turn around a little bit further. And then unfold, supporting your lower back with the back of your hand. And again, just breathe. and unfold and come back to center. So that one, like I say, I've rarely seen. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's not what I would have ever thought was wise owl looks back, but um, it actually was a Shaolin monk training that uh, I saw this. So who knows? Next one, sway the head or nod the head, either one, uh, wag the tail. So let's go back to that horse riding stance, nice and wide. Before we even get into the posture itself, make sure you've got the stance, get set up first. Get nice and comfortable. Make sure you're sitting back so that you're going straight up and down. Find that right separation so that you can just move nice and easily like this. Like I said, you don't have to go all the way down. Even just moving right up in here is fine. Just you're trying to activate the quads just a little bit. Okay. So again, there are a couple of variations on this. They're all fairly sim similar, at least the ones I've seen. So let's try the first one. We're just gonna kind of go back and forth. So you're gonna turn to the left. You're gonna bend over a bit, not too far. Look at your heel, look at your toes, come over to the right foot, look at the toes, look at the heel, come back up. Don't turn to center, just go back down. and just trying to get this swaying motion. We breathe in as we come up. We breathe out as we go across. I'm going too fast, slow it down. Now let's add another element to this. Let's go down, go across. And you're looking to the side, 
come up a little higher, turn to the center, then turn back to the side that you just left, go around. Now looking at the opposite side, turn back to center, then turn. I'm exaggerating the breathing so you can kind of hear it and get the idea. One more time. and turn back to center. Good. And let's take this a little bit further. This one is a little more strenuous, um, but I really like it. You're gonna do the same idea. You're gonna bend over, you're gonna look down, but as you come across, I'm just gonna quickly show you, as I'm coming across, I'm going to be on, I'm mirroring you. So this is your right side. The right foot turns out. So that as you come up, you've got a nice stable leg here that you straighten. You lean back onto your left and staying sideways, you kind of look up. Then you come down, the feet straighten out to face forward. Then as you come across, the other foot moves. Now I've got my hands on my thighs, but I have absolutely no weight into my hands. They're just kind of hanging there. You could do this if you wanted by just keeping your hands behind, between your legs. But if you feel you need that support, especially as you're going down, use your hands to support you. And especially push off with your hand as you're looking up if you need to. So that the hands give you that little extra stability, that little extra support. One last time. Come back to the center. Walk your feet in. Shake it out. Let's just break it up for a moment. Just do a couple of ankle turns. And then reverse. And then the opposite leg, find that focal point about 12 feet in front of you. That helps an awful lot with maintaining your balance and reverse. Good. Make believe that you're walking, you're going up on your toes and just kind of Stretch, get all the way up on the toe. You keep the toe on the ground. You're just kind of stretching the feet there. Good. One more time. Feet flat on the floor. Clearing. Breathing in. Breathing out. Good. So the next one is called two hands hold the feet. Let's do the simpler one first. Your feet are gonna be about shoulder width apart or maybe even slightly closer. You wanna feel stable, um, but you want to be able to go straight down. So we're gonna bring our hands around 
to the kidneys. We're gonna breathe out. We're gonna have go down the back of the legs, go around the inside of the legs, breathe in as it comes up. Breathe out, let the hands float up. And then bring them back down to the kidneys. So we breathe out, then we breathe in, into the kidneys, breathe out, down. Breathe in, up. So when the hands come to the height of the hips, they just float up through the air. Now let's open this up more this time. So as they come up to the hips, we're not just gonna float up, we're gonna come up the center, but now we're gonna do more like we've done in the past with heart to the sky. So you're gonna lean back slightly and then go to the kidneys. One last time, bring that energy up, send it out to the universe, gather the energy from the universe, bring it down to the kidneys, good. So another variation, going, starting in the same place, we're gonna bring it down the back of the legs. Try to keep a fairly flat back as you come down. Then instead of going up the inside of the legs, we let the arms rise to the height of the shoulders. Then we come out and we lean back. So I'll show you this way. Hold your breath, bring your hands to your kidneys, then breathe down. Breathe in. Hold your breath. Breathe out. One last time. and push down. Just rise up, roll up nice and easy, clear, breathe in, breathe out. Good. Next one is Punching with fierce eyes, or some people could clench the fists with fierce eyes. Punching is actually a little more accurate, but it doesn't, you know, in terms of what you're doing. Again, there are a bunch of variations on this. Let's start with simple. Hands on the hips or the wrists on your hips, palms up with a light fist. So we're not really clenching tight. We're just got a light fist here. Go to a wider stance, not a horse riding stance, but just wider stable stance. As you, your arm comes out, your left arm is gonna come out. It's gonna rotate. So the fist is right in front of your chest. So it rotates out like that. Then bring it in. Then go with your right hand, bring it in. Now, as the fist goes out, 
drop down a little bit and then come up as the fist comes back. Now this is called punching with fear size because the idea is we're gonna be tensing every muscle in the body, including making the eyes just really wide open. So as you punch out, breathe out through the mouth and even make a noise like ha, and then breathe in and relax. Ha. One more time, or each side. Good. Now you can actually add to that ha sound if you want. Um, the Maori tribe of New Zealand does this a lot. You stick out your tongue. Um, it's also part of Phoenix washes its feathers and you go ha. Don't have to do that, but that's just a little extension that I'll quickly show you, but we're not gonna completely do that. Let's take this a little bit further this time. Punch out, relax and scoop up the energy, pull it in. Punch out, relax, pull the energy in. Breathe out, intense everything. Relax, scoop up the energy, bring it in. Sorry. The arms come straight out. Some of you are punching down. It just comes straight out. It's almost just like this, okay? Let's try a slightly different variation. This time, stay with the wide stance. You're going to punch with both hands simultaneously. And again, as you punch, you're gonna crouch down. So it's <laughs> Breathe in. One more time. And relax, walk it in. Give yourselves a nice rub on the kidneys. Clenching the fists or punching with fear size is for strengthening the liver. The last one we're going to do is bouncing on the toes seven times to cure a thousand ills. The simplest one, and the idea here is with, with all of this posture, regardless of which variation you're doing, is we're going to get up on our toes and then we're going to just let our body drop and let the heels make contact with the ground. When the heels make contact with the ground, you should feel a vibration working its way up through your body. This is huge for the skeletal system, the bones, the bone marrow, all of that. So we're just going to breathe in, leave your arms by your side. As you breathe in, come up on your toes, get up as high as your breath can carry you up, and then just let it go with your open mouth, breathing out through the mouth. So we breathe in. and just let the whole body shake. <sighs> Two more times. <sighs> Good. Now, an interesting variation that I've seen is you bend over. Keep a fairly flat back. You don't want to be 
twisting, hurting your back at all. Just go down as far as comfortable. A lot of you can go down further than I. This is as far as I can go comfortably and that's fine. Then you breathe in as your arms come up the body, come all the way up, slightly back as you go up on your toes and then drop and then lean forward. One more time. Good. Well, it's clear. Good. Just to take a moment, go back to the Wuji stance. Just check in with your body. That last one should kind of help smooth everything out. It works with all the meridians. And hopefully now you feel the energy running pretty evenly throughout the body. Let's try a posture or sequence on bone. It's a form of bone marrow cleansing. You're gonna take your hand and you're gonna put it in the small of your back like we did with the other. You're gonna sweep out with your left hand. You breathe in, bring it right in front of your face, palm out. And just take a moment there. Now turn your palm so it faces up, push up. Not very high, not like we were doing with connecting heaven and earth, but high enough. Make that connection to the universal energy. Now this is gonna frustrate some people. We're gonna do, you need to do this really slowly. You're gonna turn your palm so it faces the body. You're gonna keep the hand maybe an inch away from the body, almost touching the body. And as you go down, try to scan your energy system. Take your time, go real nice and slow. Relax the fingers, the hand, allow it to just feel your energetic system as you go all the way down to the lower Dantian and slightly below. When you get down to the bottom, we switch. The left hand now goes to the Ming Men point. The right hand sweeps out and comes in front of the face, palm out. Make sure your knees are soft, slightly bent, never locked out. Then palm up, connect to the sky, to the universe, to the heavens. Turn the palm towards the body, keeping it very close to the body, almost touching. Slowly scan. And where you feel like there's not enough energy, stop there for a little bit longer. Let the energy run out of your palm and just fill that, en that spot with the energy that it so desires.
And when you get down to the bottom, take your time slowly. I'll wait. Bring both hands around to the side, bringing down the heavens just once. Nice deep breath in, feel that energy as you lift it up. Breathe out as you push it down through the bi-hui point, the top of your head, down through the chest, the abdomen, the hips, the legs, deep into the ground. Step the feet together, put one palm over the other, either holding at the wrists or intertwining at the thumbs. Let your body rock and sway, relax into it as the energy moves out of your palms and into your lower dantian, filling that area with energy, filling that, en that area with light, with love. And allow that energy then to spread from the lower dantian and spiral down your legs and up your torso. And as it moves through your body, it dispels any darkness, any energetic stagnation. Removing negative thoughts and emotions until every part of your body is aglow with energy. And allow that energy to expand beyond your physical body, encasing you in a safe, protective, energetic cocoon. And while you're floating inside that cocoon, begin to notice what it feels like to be safe. To be healthy. To be at peace. Take a deep breath in, gather those feelings and take them with you for the rest of the day. Thank you. Oh, thank you.